A matchup between two of the most exciting teams of 2024 takes place in the desert on Sunday with one key link. It's the Cliff Kingsbury Bowl. Crossover Thursday, let's go. You are locked on NFL Crossover, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome in Crossover Thursday. Alex Clancy locked on Cardinals. David Harrison locked on Commanders. Thank you for making Locked on Cardinals and Locked on Commanders your respective first listens free wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode of Crossover Thursday is presented by Price Picks. Go to pricepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code all lowercase locked on NFL to win 50 bucks instantly when you play $5. Coming off a punishing of the Cincinnati Bengals, Washington Commanders, flying across country uh, with Cliff Kingsbury, former head coach, Arizona Cardinals, coming off a tough loss to the NFC champion um, contender last year in the Detroit Lions, 20-13. to Something's got to give David Harrison of Lockdown Commanders, and I think that if the over-under in this game was 100, I'd still probably take the over. So when we, so when we you know unpack this matchup, uh, first segment, David, is going to be under a microscope. He's going to give us the biggest storylines on both sides of the ball. Then it's going to be my turn. Cardinals, biggest storylines in the second segment, and the pass to re- victory for both teams. David, impressive win. Jane Daniels has looked fantastic. He looks mature because yeah. he's one of the older rookie quarterbacks that we've seen in some time after playing quite a few years in college. Kind of walk me through the offense so far because that's the fun stuff and the more positive mm-hmm. of the two, and then we'll pivot to the defense. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, the story, the story with the offense is that development of Jaden Daniels, right? And and if you go all the way back into like rookie minicamp and and mandatory minicamps and all that stuff, the the constant that's always been there, even if the throws haven't always been there, the command of the offense hasn't always been there. Jamin, uh, Jamin's Jaden Davis, Jaden Daniels, not Jamin Davis, the linebacker. <laughs> wow, Jaden Daniels' poise, unlike mine, has been unquestioned like the entire time that he's been here. I mean. Even going back to rookie minicamp, like just watching him in a one-day practice uh, environment and listening to his teammates and kind of just seeing the way that he kind of captured the room and captured the players on the field at, at, the, at the times he was dealing with them, that's always been there. And I've been sharing this this analogy with everybody. Um, I even shared it with Jaden's mother at one point when she came out for practice during training camp, and she said that I nailed the analogy, so I like sharing it. I kind of said that Jaden seemed like the kind of dude that if his, if his house was on fire, he would find a way to collect all of his valuables, just the important stuff, and just calmly stroll out of his house. Like there would be no panic. There would be no run. There would be no screaming fire. And I don't mean to downplay house fires. Please, if there is one, don't try to be that calm and collected. But that just kind of describes what Jaden Daniels is. And at every moment, man, I mean, mandatory mini camp, first time the veterans are in there, Terry McLaurin is just going crazy about how this rookie quarterback is coming to him after a set and saying, hey, dude, that route there, I thought you were going to do this, you did this. Here's what you like. Here's what I like. Okay, after practice, let's run that some more. And, it, and it's the rookie going to the veteran saying, let's do this some more. How early he comes in, but not just being in the building, right? Doing his own little mini walkthroughs with rookie wide receiver Luke McCaffrey. And as you go through this process, opening week of the NFL season, I will say that his internal clock did look sped up. I will say that, but not to the point where he was frantic. Then you go to the New York Giants game, even better. And the Cincinnati Bengals game, man, I mean, that was nobody. Nobody saw that coming. And even Dan Quinn had to admit 14 straight scoring drives over the course of two games, plus a little bit of a fourth quarter in week one. Even he had to admit in an exclusive conversation with WSA 9's Chick Hernandez out here in D.C. that even he didn't see that coming. So, like, this kid is impressing everybody, including the dudes who broke down thousands of hours of tape and interviews and everything else and made him the number two overall draft pick. That's how impressive he's been so far. Yeah, and the, the interesting part is, David Harrison, you very well know this. You've been around the game a long time. You're a smart dude. Is There's a couple things. One, Kyler Murray was drafted when he was 21. Jaden Daniels mm-hmm. will be 24 in December. And while it seems like those two years aren't that big of a deal, these guys are, and I say this respectfully, they're kids. You and I are 40. They're, they're young men who need to – develop way more than just on the football field. And of those two years of him in college, where he balled out at LSU with Brian Kelly, going to an adult in the room with Dan Quinn. And it's just like, you need those little things, especially, I mean, even as a 23 year old, but he had, he's ahead of the curve with that. And that's a good thing. He's not Sam Darnold going to East Rutherford at 20, seeing ghosts like the, the, even though the commanders have been 
a dysfunctional organization under, under the last owner. It seems like the stability is there with Adam Peters, and he's mature enough to be able to revel in that from the jump. Is that accurate? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I, I think you're I think you're 100 correct. And I think something too, like not just Jaden's years, and I think the years are certainly significant, but it's what happened in those years, right? Like you mm -hmm. you look at Kyler Murray, like Kyler Murray comes up, he kind of takes the nation by storm, and then boom, he's the he's the savior of a franchise. And that's a lot of pressure on anybody, but especially a young man of that age. Jaden Daniels has been playing football long enough to be the potential savior of a program in Arizona State. Like nobody ever thought when he was at ASU that like national no. championship was, you know, I mean, like, so I say potential savior, like with, you know, it's a, it's a grain of salt type of grain of potential savior to outcasts, right? Like everybody remembers the video of his own teammates trashing him when he transferred to LSU. Then he goes to LSU and follows, you know, is, is one of the guys that has to follow behind the great Joe Burrow. And no, there's no playoff and there's no national championship, but there's a Heisman trophy. But I think those experiences kind of show him. Like when you talk to him about Arizona state, Arizona media or Phoenix media was out here uh, today at practice talking to him about some of his Arizona state stuff and like how he's grown since then. And you hear the names he talks about Herm Edwards, Antonio Pierce, Brandon, Ayuk, Rashad white, Ricky Pearsall. Like he knows who his people are and it goes beyond the logo. The logo is just the, the, the uniform we're wearing at work, the relationships with the people that matter and the people who actually give a dang about you. So when you ask, why is Jaden Daniels so poised? Why is Jaden Daniels coming into a Monday night football game in Cincinnati? Like it's just any other game because he has learned through his experiences. It is just another game because guess what? He has learned something that a lot of NFL players don't learn until it's almost too late. Sometimes that, and this is on, some fans are going to get mad at me here. The people wearing Cardinal red, when you start wearing Vikings purple, if that ever happens for Kyler Murray, a lot of those people are going to forget you. They're going to go on to the next guy, and that guy's going to be their next favorite quarterback. Jaden Daniels already understands that. So as proud as he is to get these fans behind him and as much as he enjoys their support and everything, he also understands that at the end of the day, what's important is the pre people around you that are really invested in your welfare, and that's why the Monday Night logo, the music, the fans in the stands don't bother him or impact him because he has that perspective. Yeah, and that's that's really well said. And you know, we'll pivot here to Cliff Kingsbury. Obviously, you know, for Cardinals, you know, my everydayers that have been around for years, I, I was never the biggest fan. I the the mm -hmm. the line that I said that I think best illustrated Cliff Kingsbury as a head coach while calling plays was he puts together a hell of a movie trailer, but most of the time the movie isn't very good. Yeah, and what you've yeah, seen you so told me that. is um, early in seasons, Cliff thrives. And that's what we've seen. I'll get to this. This is about him as a commanders. But I think as an offensive play caller only and a developer of a quarterback only without the CEO duties of a head coach, I think he's in a much better spot. Talk to me before we pivot here to the defense before we go 15 minutes in the first segment. What Cliff Kingsbury has meant to Jaden Daniels. And, and, I mean, he's a player's coach. I'm assuming people love him out there. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the dude's cool, right? Like, like you have this impression of Cliff Kingsbury. Socks, bro. You remember, you remember the house socks. during – this wear socks. He's got the he's got the Travis Scott Mac attacks on every day. Like you remember the house during the COVID draft and everything. Like the dude is just cool, but he's also a very down to earth dude. When you start talking to him, I think the players really resonate with that, or that's how he resonates with them. And what I've really liked about what Cliff Kingsbury has done here with Jaden is he hasn't tried to do too much. He hasn't tried to force the issue. Uh, you know, you look at Caleb Williams out in Chicago, man. Fifty two passes last week, uh, trying trying to carry the Chicago Bears. Nobody's asking Jaden Daniels to come out here and carry this team yet. When he gets done throwing a bomb to Terry McLaurin or, you know, completing another touchdown drive to take the lead on Monday night, he's on the sideline dapping up all his linemen, all his receivers. But then you also see him going over to John Allen, veteran defensive tackle on this defense, and pumping him up too. So the dude may not have a C on his chest because there are no captains on this team, permanent captains on this team. The dude may not be being billed as the leader, savior of the Washington Commanders. But make no doubt about it, he is a leader, and he's being facilitated to do that because Cliff Kingsbury is not putting too much on his plate before he's ready to do it. And I think that you're also seeing a true element of a combined offense between himself, Brian Johnson, the offensive pass game coordinator and assistant head coach, and Anthony Lynn, the run game coordinator, who if Cliff Kingsbury were to leave this job, uh, obviously you'd have a lot of success to do that. I think Anthony Lynn would be the next man in line for that job. So I think all of those elements, again, like you said, we'll see how this looks week six, week seven, right? But right now, right, that's why it all looks really good. Yeah, so far so good. Now talk to me about the defense. Um, not even close yeah. to what it looked like a couple of years ago. Most of the front is gone aside from yeah. aside from uh, Jonathan Allen. You know, Montez Sweat is gone. Chase Young is gone, even though he never really potentially lived up to number two overall uh, billing. Um, talk to you about right. the defense and what the Cardinals can expect. 
Yeah, man. I mean, the the identity that Joe Wood Jr. Dan Quinn want to have is aggression, getting after the quarterback, hunting the ball. What the Washington Bears defense has lacked in these first three weeks is aggressive play, hunting the quarterback, getting after the ball. Um, so it has not been a success. John Allen, again, the veteran defensive tackle, not the veteran. Bobby Wagner would be the veteran, but John Allen yeah. flat out said earlier this week or at the end of the game, rather, um, we've got to do better. We've got to support our offense. Thank God for that offense or else we'd be, you know, we'd be uh, down in the dirt. And, and that's fine to oh, be aware of it, but you got to do it. You know what I mean? So we'll see. Uh, 400 plus yards of offense to the Cincinnati Bengals. Joe Burrow, one of his best days in his career stat wise. Jamar Chase, one of his better games stat wise. They still come out with the win, but that defense, that's not a sustainable defense. And that's what the Cardinals are going to be looking to do is, is to exploit that defense and contain that offense. Yeah, it's going to be fascinating to see because the Cardinals had a very uh, low output offensive game last week and the Commanders had a very low output defensive game and the defensive mindset. We'll see We'll see what breaks, um, if either. Alex Lancey locked on Cardinals. David Harrison locked on Commanders crossover Thursday here. Cardinals under a microscope. Next. This episode of Crossover Thursday is brought to you by the Game Time app. Uh, Game Time is uh, badass, if I can say that. Super easy, super clean. Uh, they've got a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets even easier. Um, it filters out all the fluff, so you can just see the tickets that you want to be looking at. They've got this thing uh, called um, – you can toggle for all-in pricing. So, you know, people are like, well, what are the what are the fees? What's this total going to be when I see a number and then I don't know what the total is going to be? You can toggle to a feature called all-in pricing where you see the tickets you want – and it's the total amount that you will pay for those seats. And if you want to know where the seats are, what they look like, they have a panoramic view from the seats before you buy them. So you want to go to Chase Field to see if the Diamondbacks can can lock in a you know lock in a playoff spot, or if you want to go see a Nationals game, you can do that and see where you're going to be the view that you're going to be seeing from the seats before you buy them. It's an absolute game changer. Take the guess. We're going to buying tickets with game time, all the game time app, create an account. Use code locked on NFL for 20 bucks off your first purchase terms. Apply again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N N F L for 20 bucks off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets. Lowest price. Guaranteed. Crossover Thursday, Alex Clancy, David Harrison. We're having fun. We're dudes. We're hanging out talking football. Oh, uh, David, you'll know because we've done crossover at this point. Appreciate football. A sixth of the season is already gone. Don't be uh, those knuckleheads that just forego week four through week four, 15 because you think it's going to be here every week. You know how boring summer is? Appreciate football. Arizona Cardinals coming off a loss, uh, one and two, some – think including me that they very well could have been three and zero at this point if you know they were a little bit sharper against buffalo and then you know if they would have scored more than three points in the second half against detroit the bigger story here for the cardinals is will they be able to take advantage of a bad defense a bad defense as currently like right now it's circumstantially a bad defense okay a lower than average defense and they did it against the rams even though the rams have kind of a front but uh their their offense was was decimated so the, the Cardinals were able to take advantage there. Um, and that's the biggest thing because the offense, that's the biggest story this year. They drafted Marvin Harrison Jr. They didn't trade back. Year six with, with, with Kyler Murray. Drew Petzing showed proof of concept last year. And you look at the skill position players across the NFL with how much bad, bad you know, football is being played. You look at the roster of the Cardinals offense, they should be putting up 30 points a game irrespective of opponent. And they didn't do that last week. And uh, that's that's the biggest story for me. I mean, it's Kyler Murray, Marvin Harrison Jr., Trey McBride's a concussion protocol still. Uh, Kelvin Beecham looks to be starting at right tackle. David, from your side, what yeah. questions do you have specifically about the Cardinals' offense as uh, the Washington defense looks to bounce back? Yeah, I mean, I mean, the big the biggest question I have is is I want to know if there is a perception problem here, right? Because we all, we a lot of times we all suffer from confirmation bias, right? Like mm -hmm. I think this, so I see this. Here's the thing, though. I've been telling people all like all the end of last season, all off season, and especially once I saw the schedule, and people are like, "Oh man, first four games you got Giants and you got uh, uh, the, the Arizona Cardinals. That's two wins right there." And I said, whoa, whoa, "Whoa, slow, slow down, slow down." The Arizona Cardinals once Kyler Murray came back, and even then, like you still have new new system, new coaches. Like so, you have to have grain of salt. Like that's a better team than a lot of people expect on the outside, I think. But then I turn on the tape. And on my, on my travels from Ohio after Monday night here to here in Phoenix uh, Tuesday night, I watched two of their three games this season. Now, 
here's the biggest transparency thing. The one game I couldn't download to watch uh, was the win, right? Mm -hmm. So like I haven't seen them at their best, you know, quote unquote. Um, but the other games I'm seeing, man, and what and and this could be the confirmation, or this could be be clouded on my end because I'm seeing a lot of short passes from Jaden Daniels, a lot of quick passes with space around receivers. But it looks to me, Marvin Harrison included, even Trey McBride at times, that one, the ball is not 100% accurate. Kyler Murray is kind of off trajectory, off target, making guys climb ladders for 10-yard hitch routes and, and things like that when they shouldn't be. And then two, the, the Cardinals receivers seem to be having a hard time, generally speaking, making catches through contact. So how much of that, Alex, is me seeing a lot of completions in Washington, so maybe I'm, I'm getting spoiled in three weeks thinking everything should be caught? Or and how much of that is is reality? Um, I think it's probably 70 30, the former. Uh, I, I did a I did a full segment and a half on this um earlier in the week where Kyler's got to throw more catchable balls from Marvin Harrison Jr. and not just rely on him to go up and get 50 50 balls three games into yeah. the, three games into his career. And he's never had six foot three receivers before, and that's all he has now, aside from Greg Dorch. Greg Dorch was the size of receiver that he had pretty much for the first four years of his career. And that's not an excuse. It's a reason. And the Cardinals, every single person on the Arizona Cardinals offense has a new role in the wide receiver group, in the pass catching group with Trey McBride. Trey McBride was the 1A, 1B, 1C, 2, 3, 4 last year. He was the only one. Now you've got Marvin Harrison Jr. Where's the where's the pecking order? Where's where's Michael Wilson fitting? Michael Wilson led the team in tar oh no, he led the team in recession receptions. Uh, last week, right. eight catches for 67 yards. He's a very talented receiver who would be a wide receiver too on the majority of teams. It's still a feeling out process when the rushing game isn't working. And that's what we yeah. saw against Detroit, where it's like, okay, going into the season, I was like, all right, where's where's MHJ going to be on the pecking order in week seven? Is he going to be number one bona fide? Is it going to take him a little bit longer? Not everybody's Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase. And we saw pretty much after week one, which was kind of a, a flub fest, he's ready, he's ready to rock. Now they need yeah. to figure out what it's like when running the ball isn't working, which it didn't this past week. And it begs the question, David Harrison of Locked On Commanders, are they going to be a throw first team now? Is it going to be more run three yards, turn around, and that's that's a rushing attempt because mm -hmm. they have so many weapons, because they have so many options. And if you get teams on your heels that way, then the running game is just going to eat. Now, while yeah. I don't think it's going to be like that, a complete overcorrection because of one game against a good defensive front, I think it's going to be more of that than just run on first, run on second, situational, you know, play action or short route to move the sticks. And and it's it, I think it's a it's a learning process. Still, fans don't want to hear that because they're like, I'm ready now. You got Marv. Let's go. It takes a little bit yeah. longer. Than that. Yeah, and what's really interesting, man? Like this was a game early on in the schedule. I looked at this game. I was like, if you look at these opponents, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Giants, Cincinnati Bengals, none of those teams are tight end heavy. But then you look at the Arizona Cardinals, I'm like, man, with Trey McBride, like this could be the first matchup we really see a team use that tight end to try to attack this defense. And if they've never seen that before through three weeks, how are they going to react? Well, it turns out the Cincinnati Bengals, they didn't use, they were using Mike Gusecki at a higher rate, didn't use him as much because they got T. Higgins back and Jamar Chase was able to get loose a little bit. Right. And now, like you mentioned, Trey McBride might not even play in this game. So now I don't even know if we're going to see that. But my question on the flip side of that is if Trey doesn't go, well, one, do you expect Trey to be able to clear in time? If he can't clear in time, how big of an impact is, is that on this Cardinals offense? You know, I, I, I'm i not a doctor. I love saying that. You know, I, right. I I don't know. But, I mean, he's still in protocol Wednesday. We'll know more Friday. But uh, Elijah Higgins, backup uh, backup tight end, who, you know, isn't a household name by any stretch, he caught the Kyler Murray, Jared Verse in a blender touchdown against the Rams in the back of the end zone where Kyler Murray did the Steph Curry before it was completed. He That was Elijah Higgins who caught that ball. Um, yeah. He can, he can come in and be 80% of Trey McBride. He is more athletic than Trey McBride in certain respects. Trey McBride's just, you know, he, he's George Kittle. You know, it's just, you can't really compare. Um, you can't really compare it even if it may not be as pretty. But, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I think they'll be fine at tight end. And just as mentioned, they've got plenty of options to be able to utilize when it's not Trey McBride. Um, but yeah. I guess and we'll know more tomorrow. And, uh, and hopefully he can run, but if not, Elijah Higgins has got it covered. Now, quickly pivoting the defense here before we go to pass mm -hmm. to victory, the Cardinals' defense has been the surprise. The Cardinals' mm -hmm. defense has been overwhelmingly positive. Even though they gave mm -hmm. up 34 points against the Bills, it's Josh Allen, and you know the Cardinals are severely undermanned on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, Dennis Gardeck has been a vision. 
He's got uh, eight tackles for losses and sacks combined through three weeks. Situational pass rusher, really, uh, but he's he's a darling here. The Cardinals are going to be without Justin Jones uh, signing um, this offseason for the rest of the year, so it's going to be interesting to see what happens there. Uh, Darius Robinson isn't back first-round pick. Like The Cardinals are scarce with talent, but what they do have is Kazir White and Mac Wilson. Mac Wilson has been one of the best signings that Monty Austin Ford has made. He's the Kazir White signing from this season. Those two guys yeah. playing side by side in the middle of the field have been the perfect metronome. Buda Baker and Jalen Thompson. Jalen Thompson is now a household name. Buda Baker is the apple of everybody's eye that's not an Arizona Cardinals fan. And people want to trade Buda, people want to let Buda Baker walk. I'm like, 31 teams will really? be in his DMs. Yeah, we don't yeah. have time for that. That could be another, that could yeah. be an entire show. <laughs> so what the Cardinals do well, they do really well. And what they don't yeah. do well is null and void. So it's going to have to be a balancing act with one of the more talented quarterbacks and Cliffy baby who they know, but yep. it's just a different thing with Austin Eckler out. I mean, I think that's a massive deal, especially in the yep. screen, in the, in the screen game. So it'll be very fascinating to see what the Cardinals defense does with Jaden Daniels and Cliff Kingsbury, knowing some of the offense now pass to victory. Um, this is going to be a little bit less run of the mill. I think, especially with how these teams stack up. We'll discuss that next crossover Thursday. Your team, every day. This episode of Crossover Thursday is brought to you by FanDuel. Hey, NFL fans, you can start your season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check the latest stats. You can view live play-by-play. So if you want to be more informed before you put some cheese down, FanDuel makes it easier than ever for you to get all the stats, all the information, live play-by-play, so you know where to place your bets. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. All right. David Harrison at D Harrison 82 on Twitter. At Clancy's Corner. Finally got my Twitter back, man. Woo! I feel alive. <laughs> David, pass to victory. Um, I have no idea what you're going to say. I know you sent me a little text. Pass to victory. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually really curious about what they need to emphasize. Yeah, so the three things that the Washington Commanders have to do in order to win this game is, number one, contain Kyler Murray. Number two, you can't get out physical by James Conner. Number three, you can't get caught up in the hype of coming back to Arizona. Those those are the three things you got to do. And Alex, I'll let you pick which one is most intriguing to you, and we can dissect that one first. Yeah, you know, I think it's, I think it's the rush attack because of how poorly the Cardinals ran the ball last week. That's so boring. But the rush yeah. tag is so important to the Arizona Cardinals offense and the ability to, to move the ball down the field. That's the biggest one for me I, I'd like to hear more about. Yeah, I mean, it's been really interesting to me. And, you know, again, I've only been to watch two-thirds of the games this year, so there's, there is that grain of salt that needs to be thrown in here. But it looks to me that this Arizona Cardinals offense, they really like to get Connor going, especially that – I mean, especially that Buffalo Bills game. Like, mm-hmm. like ten, I think it was like 10 of the first, like, 12 touches all yep. went his way, and they were physical. And they were in the end, you know, the, the Bills were trying to stand up and it was just it was it was a heavyweight bout. And I was like, man, this is like old school football. And then just gradually they kind of just go away from it. And then watching that Lions game, it was almost the same, like not not quite as heavy. Right. The workload. But like there was a lot of physicality. And I feel like he's really kind of the physical part of the Cardinals offense. And there was a lot of physicality early. But then especially as like they weren't able to kind of take the lead and the Lions kind of held that lead. And some of the fourth downs didn't work out. Like they just kind of went away from that part of the game. And I just wish that they would just kind of stick there, like looking at like a Cardinals potential success thing. And I look at the Washington Commanders, and if there's one thing that they haven't been able to do against opponents this season, even though they're two and one, is stand up to bullies. Mike Evans pushed them around. Chris Godwin pushed them around. Uh, Bucky, Brooke, Bucky Irving, different sort of physical skill, right? Speed, agility, ability to get through the gap quick and, and accelerate push them around. Then you go to New York, the only bully they got, Malik Neighbors, uh, you know, two game career at the time, but he had a career day, but it was a very good day nonetheless, even if it is only a two, two, day, uh, two game career, career day. And then you go to Cincinnati and again, Joe Burrow, one of the best days of his career. If you look at Joe Burrow's stat line and every other stat line he's had like that in his career, this is the only time he's ever lost a game like that. Jamar Chase, same thing. Look at that stat line, all those stat lines in his career, only time he's ever lost this game with that type of a stat line. Zach Moss was doing his thing. Like, this Washington Commanders defense so far can get bullied. So the Arizona Cardinals come out 
and establish some of that bullying physicality with their running back, which I, if, if I'm an offensive coordinator looking at this defense, that's exactly what I'm doing. But yeah. then they go away from it. That's going to be, I think this gonna be frustrating for Cardinals fans. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, see, it's the, they don't know who they are yet thing. Mm-hmm. It's not that. Okay. They're almost there and they don't have, obviously because they only put up three points in the second half while, while blanking Detroit last week, they don't have an alternative if they're not able to move the rock running the ball right away. And I think that that's yeah. something that's, it's borderline terrifying where it's like, they're going to figure it out. It's going to be fine. I think you're going to see a lot more play action. I think you're going to see a lot more. Um, uh, you're going to see a lot more passes from Kyler Murray because here's the thing, David, Kyler Murray is the most talented player on the team. Mm-hmm. The more he has the ball in his hand, the better the opportunity for great things to happen. So while running the ball, and I think Drew Petzing's a run-first guy, and I've said it all year, this is going to be a run-first offense, unless Marvin Harrison Jr. is that good where it's like, okay, you kind of need to shift a little bit. So as we're pivoting to the keys to victory for the Cardinals, this is the first game where I've said 15 targets. Mm -hmm. See what the kids got. And you need to do them in all ways. Okay, so the touchdowns he's caught – varying degrees okay he had the crossing route which was a great play call by drew petzing Kyler murray dropped in the bucket he beat two defenders masterful uh kyler murray's interception was a hail mary ball from the 30 yard line into double coverage it's like you need smart concise zipped in targets not to get him going he doesn't need the juice anymore he's already there Mm -hmm. you need to get him the ball in chunk situations, 15 targets. I don't think it's outside of the realm of, of, of normalcy. He had 11 last week, I think. That's number one for me. It's like, okay, we've got our sea legs here. You've got a defense you can exploit. Go do it. And I know Jeremy yeah. Chin still, he still gives me the chills. Like, I know that he's a guy that people don't really talk about anymore. I don't really understand why. But Marvin Harrison Jr., number one. That's a number one guy. Number two is... You need the Cardinals need to make Daniel uh Jaden Daniels a runner of the football. Like mm-hmm. keep everything in front of you. Little paper cuts are fine. The Terry McLaurin stuff can't happen. Yeah. Because of how electric he is with his feet, make him just do that. And that will slow down any sort of momentum you have with the pass catchers. Now, Zach Erickson is going to get his. Naturally, I'm sure Brian Robinson will have an uptick with Austin Eckler out. Cliff Kingsbury, what, he had most passes behind the line of scrimmage in the NFL by 20% through two weeks. Like, we know what Cliff's offense is kind of like. We don't know what Jaden yeah. Daniels' legs look like in an NFL, you know, on an NFL field at State Farm Stadium. Keeping him in front of you is a massive, massive task, and it's going to need yeah. to happen for the Cardinals to win. And then finally, time of possession. Like, even if the Cardinals turn the ball over, their offense is good enough to where they can recoup against Washington. Time of possession, they got bludgeoned last week. I think they were only on the field 24 minutes. It can't happen. With the defense that the Cardinals have, it can't happen. The offense needs to be on the field at least half the game. Yeah, I mean, and it was the opposite against Buffalo Bills early, right? Like, they dominated the time of of possession. I think both of these teams kind of understand, right? The the more our quarterback has the ball in his hands, the better off we're going to be. So this game, I mean, brother, this thing kicks off at, what is it, 405 Eastern, 105 local. I mean, I don't know. We might be out of there by 3 p.m. You know what I mean? And that's I'm, I'm hyperbolizing here, but yeah. uh, this this clock may just be this clock may just be running, and these guys may not. We may have like five possessions per team, so it's going to be really interesting. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I look at this, I look at this, and I, and I look at the Washington Commanders, and I think that's absolutely what they're going to try to do is control the clock. And you're right, both sides of the ball, both defensive lines, pass rushing units, front sevens, however you want to describe them, have got to just be getting drilled through their head today. Do not run past the quarterback. Do not rush beyond the quarterback because both of these quarterbacks will absolutely kill you. If you're if you're looking at the backside of that quarterback because you ran past him, you're toast. And, and that's what's that's that could very well be uh, the determining factor in this game is which defensive pass rush loses discipline first. Yeah, and then one key thing just to keep in the back of your mind: the Cardinals had a very very difficult time getting off the field against Josh Allen on third and longs. There were multiple third and longs where Josh Allen just, oh, nobody's open, tuck it, I'm gone. That, yep, you know, off. that's something that Jaden Daniels is more than capable of doing. The Cardinals getting off the field on third down, especially when they put themselves in a situation to do just that, and then an uh, elite quarterback uh, has other ideas. That's something the Cardinals are absolutely going to have to do if they want to win this game. David Harrison at D Harrison 82 does great work over Locked on Commanders. Alex Clancy, Locked on Cardinals. Um, follow me on Twitter, Clancy's Corner. Thank you. 
for making Locked On Commanders and Locked On Cardinals your respective first listens each and every day. We will talk to you on our respective podcast tomorrow.